Touchstone Science, and today we're going to show you how to build your very own oscilloscope out of a common TV. So, let's get to it. The first thing you're going to want to do is dismantle the back frame of the TV so you can get inside of it. Alright, so now we're inside the TV. First thing you're going to want to do is ground off this. If you need to know how to do that, you can look inside uh, my last high voltage TV video. But basically you're just going to get something that's grounded and stick it underneath that suction cup. It stores up capacitors inside of it and that can deliver a pretty big shock to you. So on this paneling above these two coils, there's going to be a horizontal and a vertical coil. I'm not sure which one is which here, but we'll be finding out which is which in just a moment. You'll see there are pairs of wires, so here we have a blue wire, a red wire, a yellow wire, and on this side over here, there's a gray wire. You can see here that the wires feed down to terminals, so we can see that the blue wire is connected with the red wire, and the yellow wire is going to be connected with the gray wire. So now what we want to do is unplug one of them. I'm going to go ahead and take out this yellow and gray wire here. Here we go, it's disconnected, and we're going to want to turn on the TV and see what it does to the picture. Okay, powering on the TV. As you can see, it's giving us a vertical line. I tried connecting up audio cords to the system, but to no avail, it wasn't producing the waves I wanted. The line was just moving up and down. So, let's go ahead and try the other coil. First off, let's reconnect this to its primary position. Alright, and let's disconnect this coil. And we should get a vertical line now. Let's double check to make sure. As you can see, my TV isn't starting up. When you try to run the vertical coil and the TV doesn't fire up at all, that means that you have a special TV. These TVs are safer, but are going to be harder for the use we're going to want to do. I tried resistors equaling the same resistance as the coil itself, but it was to no avail, as the TV still wouldn't fire up. So what I did is I got this coil off of another TV, one that was already broken that I found, and I'm going to go ahead and connect up this coil to the part where the other coil would be, just to sort of try to trick the TV. So let's go ahead and get some alligator clips and connect this coil to the terminal of the other coil. That should do it. There we are. Yeah, I've connected up the audio cable into the terminals of the blue and red cables. I have the audio cables connected up to a stereo system I had lying around. All right, it all fired up correctly. So now let's go ahead and try playing some public domain non-copyright music through the system to see if it gives us the proper wavelengths. See, the whole project works like a charm. You can even put the case back onto the TV and run the wires out of it to give it a sleeker design. Not only can you play your favorite songs, but you can also play your favorite functions, as pulling up a function generator app or using a 555 timer frequency generator, you can go ahead and see what those waves look like on a screen. On the sides of the flyback transformer, you'll see two knobs. One of them will be for focus and one of them will be for brightness. Chances are your TV's already in focus, so I just worry about the brightness. If you twist the knob for the brightness on the TV screen, the waves will become brighter. However, it's very important that you don't try turning the knobs while the TV is on, because not only can the flyback transformer shock you and that's dangerous, but also I found it shorts out the TV. Trying to adjust the flyback transformer brightness settings while the TV was on, even if everything turned back up, it shorted the flyback transformer. It'll start up for a second. You can hear some slight crackling in the back. It'll flash a few times. And... It'll go out. There's only a few things you can really do with a TV like this. You can take the spare parts for circuits, but the more logical thing to do with that is this. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe. And tune in next week where we're going to teach you guys how to build more things.
Thank you.